Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Christmas is my favorite holiday. There are always so many places that you can decorate. And my guest today is going to show us how to make that beautiful mantle behind me. Joining me is Marlis Bennett. Welcome, Marlis. Well, it's nice to be here. I'm excited to get to show you some of the wonderful techniques that a colleague of mine, Susan Fierce, used on that mantle cloth. Well, it looks so festive, and I love that the stitching that you did on there. The stitching is wonderful. It's a very special stitch, and we'll show you how to get that stitch on the machine later on. Good, good. We're going to start with pin tucks. Okay. And sometimes we don't think about pin tucks as being something that that we can use in other something other than maybe a garment. Uh -huh. But pin tucks really add a lot of depth and character to even the mantle cloth back here. What I've got is a fabric, and I've marked the first two rows that I'm going uh -huh. to sew. Now, what makes these pin tucks special is that I'm using a filler cord in the pin tuck itself. This is a little small cord. You can use a size 8 pearl cotton, or you can even use what is known as gimp cord. Okay. It's what I've got on the back of my machine right now, uh -huh. the little white cord hanging out. It's approximately the same size. I've also got a metallic thread up here. This is one of a great, great accent to many of the holiday decors that you have. So you start, I have a very special foot on the machine. It is what we know as a Pintuck foot. Mm -hmm. They come in different sizes. There's a, a seven and a nine groove. This happens to be a five groove Pintuck foot. Okay. So you could make five grooves, one right after the other. And the grooves are right in the center. The Pintuck needle is a needle that has two needles coming out of the same shank. They also have a pin tuck needle that has three of the needles coming out, but it's, remember it's just one shank. Now your needle threader is not going to work for this, so you're going to have to get used to threading those needles uh -oh. by yourself. We've become so accustomed to having that We're nice spoiled. little thing. spoiled. Absolutely spoiled. And so what does this pull it one? up and what it stitch does is around it, pull, it? Yes, it pulls up your fabric and with the cord in there, it can never be pressed out. That cord is going to always keep this tuck in place above the fabric. Uh huh. That way you can wash it, press it, do whatever you need, and it will be just fine. Now, I'm also going to show you how to space them two inches apart. I have a seam guide on my machine. Mm -hmm. I would place my oh, stitch yes. outside that seam guide and I, then I can sew the second row without having to do a whole lot of guessing where I'm going with this. Oh, that's wonderful. And it just kind of guides itself through. It does. Do one, do all of your rows in one direction, and then, then do the cross rows. And then you'll come out with a piece that is looking like this one right mm -hmm. here. It has all of the gold thread, all of the pin tuck pieces. And if you'll notice, there's no stabilizer or anything behind this fabric. Do you... Um, how much do you figure it shrinks in when you're cutting your fabric so that you know uh, what allowance to go beyond? I always just sew until I have enough, but, <laughs> you know, sew by the seat of your pants. Uh -huh. But you could probably guess with a pin tuck like this that maybe in a foot you would eat up about a quarter of an inch or so. It's not really that much. Then you have your template for the triangular mm -hmm. shapes that are on the mantle cloth, and you lay, you can alternate these going down yes. your band and cut out your diamond shapes and then you're ready with those pieces and I would create all of these first before I went on to the next part and that is creating that very very nice stippling stitch that we can see around the outside of the diamond tucks. That stipple stitch really creates a wonderful edging around the pin tucking. 
Yes, and it's something that you can put on your machine uh -huh. because not all machines can do a steeple stitch that's quite that wide. Oh. So if you have a computer software package that allows you to load the stitches that you want to have on your machine, uh -huh. it's in there. As a matter of fact, it's in there in two different sizes. This is much wider than what you would normally get with your normal sewing foot. And it worked perfectly because it's almost the size of the... Uh, right. The little width that you're putting around. Right. No, yeah. And that way it really looks like it's hand done. And the beauty is you would never had to drop your feed dogs. Oh. So the easy way, you have to have a computer. It will load mm -hmm. into your computer. And then this nine pin serial cable will uh, plug one end into your computer and the other end plugs into your the side of your sewing machine. And you're ready to go with your stitches. Super. Now, the one thing about this stitch is, you know, when you're sewing with a normal stitch, the fabric just travels from the front of the foot mm -hmm. and goes to the back. Well, on this one, the fabric will travel side to side. So I'm going to show you how this is going to work. Right now, let's go to the stitch. It's very simple. This is, I like to refer to this as my PhD machine. Okay. <laughs> it's push here, dear. Okay. Everything is push button on this machine. And now I'm ready to sew. I put the stitch on that is special for this type of sewing. It allows the transporter or your feed dogs to move the fabric from not only forwards and back, but also side to side. Isn't that amazing? Is this not a beautiful stitch? It is. It's a wonderful stitch to be able to use decoratively. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to use this on a larger piece, I'm going to recommend that you sew this maybe on the diagonal. Oh, okay, so that you can fill in much more evenly. Well, it doesn't look striped exactly. that way. It, does, it won't look striped that way at all. And you can then do a lot more of this and fill in your background areas. Mm -hmm. You need to create your stripes. The one thing about this, and you notice I've gotten off maybe a little bit here, is that you want to keep the edge of your fabric parallel to the edge of your foot. That's very, right. very important because that's where you can get off because you're not used to having the foot so sideways. So are you still guiding it in as it goes, even though it's moving it? I'm back. really not doing anything. I'm just making sure that my fabric edge is parallel okay. to the edge of the foot. Remember, you've paid for those feed dogs on your machine. Mm -hmm. You let need to let, let them do the work themselves. And you can see how beautiful that stipple stitch mm -hmm. is as it comes out the other side of the machine. I also, a lot of times, will draw a line down the center of my fabric, as you can see back here. And that also helps me guide. Yes. Not only centering, but it also helps me gu with the guiding process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I'm doing a larger piece. And here we have a piece that's already sewn. This then would be put onto the edge of the diamond pieces right. that we pin tucked and have cut out already. And you put them on together with a quarter inch uh, seam. And you already pieces. put batting behind those. Yes, it's already pre-quilted okay. this way. Yes. No need to do any further quilting as you get to this. And now it's time to put the piece together. You have to create a sandwich. We've kind of switched fabrics here, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Different holiday look. Right kind of like the quilt behind me. Yeah. It's a red, white, and blue holiday theme. This is the top of your mantle piece right here. Yes. And we have our, now you have, to, we're all visual people as sewers. Yes. This one has already been pin tucked. Uh -huh. This is our pin tuck piece and we have the edging around the side. We layer this with a coordinating print behind and alternate mm -hmm. the all the pin tuck pieces on the front and then we have the salt or the print behind it. Well, when you're putting this together to sew, now the finished piece does have batting in here, but we're not going to confuse issues on this table. You would have batting behind it. You also need to have the underside of the top piece. Okay. So when you're layering this, ready, getting ready to sew it all, you would have your batting, your underside, and then your printed piece, your pin tuck pieces. You insert a cord at this point, mm -hmm. which you know you can make these on your sewing machine mm -hmm. so that they match anything that you have or that you're making. Uh -huh. And then you put the top piece in. I like to use a very special foot. It's called a um, bulky or overlock foot, the bulky edge uh -huh. foot. And that way I can sew down a straight seam, turn it, and I have a mantelpiece ready to go. While we're looking at the mantelpiece one more time, I want to thank you for joining us today. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me.
just love the look of traditional quilts in a Christmas setting. And I love the crazy quilts because they're decorative and they have so many different stitches on them. So I tried to make a couple of Christmas tree skirts. I had a paper piecing pattern and this is very simple. You just paper piece it and there's eight of them and they're identical and they fit right around in a circle. And you lay them right on top of a solid piece of fabric and when you get all done quilting that's when you cut the hole of the center. So I wanted to make it simple for myself because I don't have a whole lot of time to do quilting. So I put it on some spray basted batting and I spray basted the backing and got it all sandwiched together. And I didn't even put it in a hoop. And I worked stitches like you see here. I had looked at some old antique crazy quilts and tried to be a little bit innovative about what I could do, what my abilities were, and what those old stitches looked like. I had loops and candy cane shapes. I had hearts. I tried some Christmas tree boughs. And then I had some that I just took off the old antique stitching flame stitches and feathered stitches and my favorite was the leaf. It just seemed to fit everywhere and I had so much fun with it that I thought that I'd do another Christmas tree skirt but maybe not in Christmas colors so I could use this during the year on a lamp base, around a lamp base on an end table or somewhere, near, somewhere else in the house. One of the things I found while doing this is it was hard for me to do a circle perfect and keep the stitching just right. So I got this pattern going. This pattern is a Celtic loop. It's a continuous line and it's marked in two little spots here. And if you overlay this four times all the way around, match those points, you will be able to make a complete circle without working the whole circle at one time, but just section by section. And in the corner of this, you can see how it is when it's all connected. They are quite lacy looking, and if you weren't right on, if you got your measurements off just a little, you'd never be able to detect it. Now with some Christmas tree skirts, or some circles, they're probably light enough fabric so you can trace it. But with this particular machine, this professional freehander, it has a laser light on it. So I could pin this circle farther out on the edge of the Christmas tree skirt. And while I'm stitching in the middle of it with the needle, the laser light is shining on the outside on the line. And as I just go around with the laser light, I'm stitching, because it's pinned to the fabric, so you're moving it all in the same motion, stitching it right onto the cloth. It's a really fast and easy way to get a circle onto something farther than you normally could reach. And now I'd like to show you just a little bit of stitching on this. This particular machine is set up for fancy stitches. It has a one-shot So you can bring up your bobbin thread, you can anchor it with that, and it, all your threads will be on the top so you don't have any bird nesting on the back. It has a special thread lubricator so you can get the threads real slick, and it has a special thread tree to carry all different kinds of flat threads or ribbon-like ones, and even the weaker ones will run through this because you can set all these different tensions and use a different one for all the different weaknesses. I'll give you a little show here of a leaf.
you can get a little look at it. Just fits right down near one of those seams and it makes a beautiful decorative stitch. This is a metallic thread and it adds sparkle to every Christmas thing that you can imagine to quilt with. I hope that you'll give these simple and easy Christmas tree skirts a try. I know it's a large project, but we've made it as simple as possible. And with these fancy stitches, you ought to be able to just decorate them and have them forever as a memory piece for your home. Have you ever had an occasion where you wanted to wear something special, but you didn't want to spend a lot of time making it? Well, my guest today has come up with a clever way to make a simple one-piece vest. And joining me is designer Jesse Beekman Smalley. Welcome, Jesse. Hi, Donna. Thank you. I am so excited about this vest pattern. Now, why did you come up with this vest pattern? Well, of course, you know, Donna, I teach. Uh -huh. And I take people as young as 10. And some of my beginning students, I wanted something that they could make and finish. And they would have something to take home with them at the end of the class. You know, that's always so encouraging when they can go home and say, I made this, mm -hmm. instead of having a piece in progress, yes. which we all have many of those. That's right. Well, yes. this is the vest. Now, it looks just like a standard vest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the trick is the back, isn't the it? The trick is the back. Well, and look at that. This is made from one piece. It's one continuous piece, and once you sew it, two pieces together, turn it, and you're all done, and it's adjustable, any size. So you have actually two pieces, mm -hmm, we should say, mm -hmm. the, the lining and yes, your outer and fabric. And the outer fabric, But yes. the whole vest itself is one big piece yes. like this. Let's mm -hmm. look at that. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I was so intrigued by this. And as you said, the nice thing is, isn't that clever? Yes. So, so clever. Yes. Open up your fabric and let's show them what it looks like with the pattern piece. All righty. Now, I gather you've got that placed on a fold placed over on there. A fold. Yes. Okay. And then you just cut out all the way around, cut two. Pin them together, and you're ready to sew. So you put your right sides together? Right sides together. Okay. And you're ready to go ahead and sew it together, and then when you turn it, and it's also reversible then. Oh, that's right. It would be. Well, this yes. one you've made, so show me how and where you sewed that. Let's turn it so we have the print side out. It'll make it a little bit easier to mm -hmm. do it that way. So you put the fronts and backs together. Mm -hmm. And when you sewed this, you started where? I started here. Okay. And you can go continuously all the way around, all the way. When you get back all the way around the vest and you finish back off here, okay. you're through. And it's no seams anywhere except inside. Now you turn it inside out, press it, and then you can turn that stitch in and it. stitch it, and you're done. Now, do you clip around the curves yes, and yes. do that? I mean, yes. that's you always must important. always important that you clip around the curves to make it turn nice and smooth right. and make it lay nice and smooth. And I think yeah. that's one thing that gives it a professional look when yes. you do it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Well, how do the young teenagers or young children that make this feel once they complete it? They are excited because then they can do other things with it. With all of the surface, they're able to now, you know, embroidery is right. big, quilting is big sure. now, and um, applique, all of these things can be done because now you have a large enough surface to work with. Mm -hmm. And they are very, very excited. They want to put all kinds of things on it. And you know, I would think that because it is an open flat, no darts, no mm -hmm. nothing, mm -hmm. it would be nice to be able to embellish it. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. And a good fit. Well, one of the things you did was just to take those same little uh, Christmas snowmen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you machine applique those on. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, practically do anything. Did you do that on the side there as well? Yes. That's uh -huh. great. Yes. What else did you do here? Well, I figured out and I looked at it and I thought, well, this vest, I could do anything with it. So I decided to use a more dressy fabric mm -hmm. for evening. And you could do it really quickly to wear it out. Uh, if you know this with a simple black skirt and right. a white blouse, right. put this vest on, you're ready to go out for the evening. Now you did something a little different on the back. Though, on the back of time. that one, rather than the tie, I just let the let, let it crisscross and use the same button for the dress up effect. That's very clever. And then carrying the same button over mm -hmm. for the little 
what would you call that sort of a frog, frog closer? yeah for the little frog closer you uh -huh. know I'm I'm into buttons and I'm into different closures so I just decided to do something a little bit different just to help dress it up but you can do all kinds of things with it you know? well it looks great and I think this is such a clever idea and I love the fact that you can adjust it so that like me, up and down, yep. it's easy me to too, do. Me too, so, me too, yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today and showing us this wonderful one-piece vest. Thank you, Donna. take just a minute and talk to you about the different oils and lubricants you can use on your machine. Some machines have an oil pan under them and they can have a high and a low mark and you can fill them and I always suggest that you get the clearest kind of oil that you can and very thin because we want it to wash through the machine and help keep it clean and we want to uh, not have the yellow sticky stuff and I like it if it hits the fabric at all it dissipates in about 24 hours because it is so thin and clear. Um, when you're oiling, sometimes you have to get into a little reservoir and these zoom spouts are really great because they extend out and you can get right into the little tight places. And also it's good to have an oil bottle that has a hard metal spout on it because some of the machines have a little ball bearing down in the hole that's on a spring and you have to push that down out of the way to get the oil in there. We always like to use a silicone based lube and some people like the spray lubes. If it doesn't have the silicone base, don't use it because it may tarnish your machine. Um, the hook is probably the most important place to oil because this gets the most action and there's a new lube out there with Teflon in it and if you just put two drops in that case, it'll last for a long, long time. Thanks for watching this episode of Quilt Central, number 205, Happy Holidays. Join us next time for easy elegance, quilting for the special occasions in our lives. Quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program.
Central is made possible in part by Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. American Professional Quilting Systems, hand-guided elegance. The American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call 1-866-PADUCA.